So today we'll be solving this particular quadratic equation. 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is equals to 0. 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is equals to 0. We'll be using the quadratic equation formula x is equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a so that's the quadratic equation formula we'll be using to solve 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is equals to zero so we'll be looking at the general form of a quadratic equation we'll, we will be looking at the general form of a quadratic equation which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero so what you see on the screen is the general equation of a quadratic equation now when we talk of quadratic equations we simply mean equations where the highest power of the variable is equals to 2 when you see the highest power being equals to 2 and in this format then you have a quadratic equation but when you see the highest power being 1, you have a linear equation. If you notice this uh, quadratic equation, you see that um, ax squared plus bx plus c is 0, where you have a, which is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x and c is a constant when we say coefficient we simply mean what is multiplying x squared and what we have multiplying x squared is our coefficient of x squared and in this case is equals to a what is our coefficient of x what is multiplying x in this particular case it is b and so that is the coefficient of x and then we have the constant C. So AX squared plus BX plus C is equals to zero. So what we will try to do is we will try to make the equation we want to solve look like the general form and then we make comparison you see that um, our a in this particular case is 3 because we said the coefficient of x squared that is whatever is multiplying x squared is the a so a is 3 we can also see that the coefficient of x that is whatever is multiplying x is minus 5 so our b is equals to minus 5 and we can see that our constant c is equals to minus 8 so just like we mentioned our a which is the coefficient of x squared is equals to 3 our b which is the coefficient of x is equals to minus 5 and our constant is equals to minus 8 so in summary we have a as 3 B as minus 5 and C as minus 8. So what we would be doing right now is to be looking at the quadratic equation formula. Our quadratic equation formula is x, that is we are solving for, for x and the solution to x is simply minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, in, in this part 
of the world, we call this formula the almighty formula. But of course, it is the quadratic equation formula. Um, I will advise this formula is handy. And all we'll do is to simply substitute the values we have above into this formula. So we have an A, we have a B, and we have a C. And so we can just quickly substitute what the values are. And then we can solve. So it's a very easy equation and it helps us in solving our quadratic equations. So if you can see clearly, we have substituted for b. So we have minus b and our b is minus 5. So we have minus into minus 5 plus or minus. That plus or minus is significant. So every square root has two values, a plus and a minus value of its square root. So that plus or minus has catered for the two possible values of a square root solution, which is always a plus or minus. So in the bracket, we have minus b squared, which is now minus 5 squared, minus 4a. a is 3, and then our c is minus 8. And then the denominator, we have 2 into 3, and that's what we have. So we'll just simplify so that we can get the solution. So in simplifying, if you look above, we have minus minus 5 becomes plus 5. Minus times minus 5. If we open that bracket, it becomes plus 5. Then we have plus or minus. And then inside the bracket, inside the square root, we have minus 5 squared which becomes 25 because minus times minus is plus and 5 times 5 is 25. So we have minus 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 8 is 96. So we have minus and a minus. By the time it, it, it opens up the bracket, we have plus 96. I come again, minus 4 times 3, minus 12. Then minus 12 times minus 8 it now becomes plus 96 because minus times minus is plus. And then um, in the denominator, we have 2 times 3, which is 6. So we'll continue to simplify. So in the square root, 25 plus 96 is 121. And then, of course, um, your guess is as good as mine. We know what the square root of 121 is, which is supposed to be 11. So x now becomes 5 plus or minus 11 over 6. Remember we said because we have a plus or minus sign, there are two possible solutions to the square root. And that's why we have that plus or minus 11. If you, if you multiply 11 times 11, you have 121. If you multiply minus 11 times minus 11, you also have 121. So we'll divide this solution into two. We'll solve the positive parts on the left-hand side. So we have x is equals to 5 plus 11 over 6, which becomes 16 over 6. And then if you divide 16 by 2, you have 8. And then if you divide 6 by 2, you have 3. So we have 8 over 3, which is the solution. And then if we write it into um, Proper fractions, we have 2 whole number because 3 in 8, we have 2. 3 times 2 is 6, 8 minus 6. So we have a remainder of 2 over 3. So that's the first solution. The second solution, we'll be looking at the negative. So we have 5 minus 11 over 6. Remember on top, we have 5 plus or minus 11 over 6. We've done the 5 plus 11 over 6 on the left-hand side. Now we are doing the other solution, which is 5 minus 11 over 6. You have 5 oranges. You are now subtracting 11. So that means you, now, you are going to be owing 6. 5 minus 11 will be minus 6. So what we have is minus 6 over 6. 
which is equals to minus 1. So our solution is, our solutions are 2, 2, 2 over 3, and then minus 1. So that's the solution of the quadratic equation, 2, 2 over 3, or x is equals to minus 1. But we'll just quickly do a quick check. Uh, our check is just to prove that our answers are correct. So our question is 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is equals to 0. So what we'll try to do is to substitute the value for x in this equation and see whether it will give us 0. So what we'll just do is to substitute x. We'll put 8 over 3 and then we'll see what it gives us. So 8 over 3 squared is 64 over 9. Uh, 3 into 64 over 9 minus 5 into 8 over 3 minus 8. We simplify it further. So what we'll do is that uh, we'll divide the first term by 3. 3 divided by 64 over 9. So 3 here, 1, 3 here, 3. So you have 64 over 9. And then 3 divided by 9, you have 3. And then um, you have 40 over 3, because 5 times 8 over 3 is 40 over 3 minus 8. So we have simplified it further. So if we also want 8 to be something over 3, if you multiply top and bottom of 8, by uh, 3, you have 24 over 3. So what we are just trying to do is to have all of them on the same denominator, that is the de denominator of 3. So 64 over 3 minus 40 over 3 minus 24 over 3 is the same as saying 64 minus 40 minus 24 over 3. 64 minus 40 is 24, 24 minus 24 is 0 over 3. So the final answer will be 0 over 3, which is equals to 0. So our solution, which is 8 over 3, which is 2, 2, 3, 2 whole number 2 over 3 is correct. So we'll be checking for our second solution, which is minus 1, and we'll be substituting it into this equation, 3x squared minus 5x minus 8, and we'll see whether it's equal to 0. So for x, which is equals to minus 1. Remember, that was our second solution. We'll simply substitute it into that um, question. 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is equals to 0. So wherever we see x, we'll put minus 1. And that's what we have done in this equation here. Wherever we saw x, we'll put minus 1. So we have 3 into minus 1 squared minus 5 into minus 1 and then minus 8. So if we simplify it, we know that minus 1 squared is simply 1. So we have 3 times 3 is 3. And then minus 5, and then we open minus 1. By the time we open the bracket, it becomes minus times minus is plus, and then 5 times 1 is 5. And then we have 5 there, and then we bring the minus 8. So 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 minus 8 will be 0.